So today we will talk about BGP controller XBGP. This is a powerful concept and tool that could be used for different purposes, any cast announcement or load balancing or change controls and also, you know, DDoS mitigation. So you don't want when a DDoS attack happens, you don't want your configuration to be changed manually uh, or automated through an SSH on your routers. You can use BGP controller to withdraw or set communities. And I'll demonstrate that. But, you know, what is BGP? What is, uh, what is a BGP controller? What is a control plane? So the concepts, you know, let's go through the concepts real quickly. The control plane. What is a control plane? What is a data plane? And uh, now uh, management plane. These are simple concepts, but uh, management plane is obviously something that you are connecting your devices with a management interface and you're not using the in band. So if you're using this interface, uh, or any of the data plane interface for your management, which a lot of people do, uh, that's, you know, and that's not separation of the, you know, management plane. You use a separate interface uh, for management and there's like a separate switch that you are uh, coming through to control it so that if you're making changes and something goes wrong, you don't lose connection. All right. So um, let's talk about control plane. Control plane is essentially, if you look at how OSPF works, right? Uh, control plane and data plane. We just talked about management plane. So OSPF would connect and make neighbors on the interfaces, right? So it's using the data plane. The data plane is essentially where the data flows. So when, when the traffic comes in, it flows on these interfaces, on these wires. That's your data plane. OSPF uses data plane to make its routing tables create neighbor relationship. It, it cannot, it does not have the capability of a separation of control plane. So the concept of separate, you know, uh, control plane is, is what makes BGP unique. Uh, BGP gives you the ability to have a separate control plane. So that's called separation of control plane. So this is what this diagram basically exactly this setup basically illustrates that. How can you uh, do a separation of control plane with BGP and still make routing work? Now in this scenario, if you have to make these routes introduced into this AS and V1 to reach the V1 router to reach these routes. In a typical scenario, you're going to have, you know, either a stack route or an OSPF configured advertise these or even BGP configured create neighbor relationship, use network commands to advertise. He's going to learn, he's going to advertise and all that. We're not going to do any of that. Uh, in this setup because we are using a BGP controller who is going to inject these routes. He's going to inject these routes. So when you inject these routes through a controller, he's not learning any of these control plane routing information through his, his neighbors. In fact, he's got no neighbors. He's got no neighbors at all. Uh, he's only talking BGP to him, the outside world, and he's talking BGP to the controller. This is our controller. And good thing about these controllers is they are open source and free. You can download and play. I have <clears throat> this controller installed on CentOS. I'll show you uh, what steps are required to do that. But that's the concept of separation of control plane, data plane, and management plane. I hope this is clear. Now, in this setup, just imagine this is an ISP and the traffic is coming in and you're you're basically injecting or introducing these routes in, into this guy. And like I said, the typical way is to use network command with BGP neighbors and all, about, all of that. I've got a video on OSP at BGP, how to do that. You can look them up. But here, I'll show you V2. 
configuration that I've got only this guy as BGP and I've got only this guy as a BGP peer and it doesn't have to be one hop away I'm, in my setup it is I just you know you can connect it directly <clears throat> but in obviously my control plane now is through this route and my data plane is this route okay now I am going to introduce these routes, withdraw these routes, set the next hop to 2304 or 2303. And based on what I tell this router from this controller, the traffic will flow accordingly, right? Okay, so let's do that. Let me clear this up. And bring in the router, so I'll bring in this router here. And I will bring in XBGP. And I will bring in V, uh, I will bring in this guy, V2. So here's my V2, VOS2, V1, and this is my XBGP. Let us let me show you the BGP configuration of this guy. So he's not doing OSPF, BGP has no clue. I've injected the 422 route right now through XBGP, but I'm gonna show you how to eliminate that or you know withdraw that. Let me show you the configuration first. Show protocol BGP and in show protocol BGP. I'm peering with this guy here. This is my XA BGP, and I'm peering with the outside world 12001. That's it. No network commands, right? It's just uh, route maps, but don't worry about that. It's um, soft configuration and all that. But the thing to note is there is no network command, there is no OSPF going in. I'm not advertising anything from V2 to V1. V1 still learns 42.2.2 from 12.002, which is this guy. Let me withdraw that. X, uh, so let me start a ping to show you that. <clears throat> so he's pinging. And the next top is obviously V4. I'm not changing anything here. I'm just going to go to my controller, XABGP, CLI, neighbor. This is my neighbor right here. I'm neighboring on the interface 45002. So I'm going to say neighbor 45002. I'm going to say withdraw. Route 40 slash 24. There you go. He stopped. Right? Show IP BGP. Uh, that route disappeared. Right? I didn't touch this guy. I didn't touch this guy. No, nothing. Show IP BGP. See that? It's gone. Let me introduce it. Uh, it was going to four, let me put it on three. So I'm gonna say XWGP CLI neighbor 45 announce route 4222 slash 24. Next top, you gotta specify the next top. Let's say uh, 23003. I'm going to three now instead of four. If I were going to four, I would say 24004. That was the case previously. So let me do 23003 now. I'm redirecting my traffic. And I don't have to withdraw it for that. I just wanted to demonstrate. So if I do ping 40, it's going to say there's no route for it. It's just not going to ping anyway. But show IP BGP. No route for 4222. There you go, route 
applicant came in with the 23003. Previously, it was 23003. I introduced it to 220. We'll change that to 23404. But now he learned it. And now he's going to V3. Let me change that. See, 230. Pay attention to this guy. I'm only going to say do this. Change the next top to 24004. See, this guy already switched. This flow already is going to V4 now. Here. For 42 to 2 automatically. See how quickly it did? 24004. Uh, so from 2303 next top to 24004 without touching the V2 router, without configuring anything, I'm injecting routes through control uh, controller, XRBGP controller. That's pretty magical. Now, obviously you got the use cases here are enormous, right? You can do this any cast announcement for load balancing purposes. You can switch between them. And then obviously uh, you, you need to have a mechanism to figure out when do you need to do the load balancing, you know, whatever your criteria is. And DDoS, you wanna, you know, you figure out that there is something getting attacked on your your servers, you withdraw that route. Uh, you can do that too. Uh, so that's a, that's a very powerful concept with the BGP controller where you can inject these routes um, uh, through the controller into the router without touching this router, without configuring this router. You're just injecting and withdrawing or redirecting and all that stuff. That's very powerful. Let me show you. So that's the, you know, that's a, you know, amazing magical uh, routing control plane, you know, magic. Let me show you what it takes to get this guy going, right? Uh, it's gonna take some, uh, so obviously you gotta have, you're gonna need a uh, CentOS, I did it on CentOS, you can use any Linux. Um, but here's some catches. Once you install the XBGP through pip command, pip install XBGP. So if you don't have pip, you're gonna do yum install pip, and then pip install XBGP. Once that is done, you're gonna to have to follow these steps and where I struggled was this last part. When you do the make FIFO run XWGP in and out and change the uh, permission to 600 for these files, for both the files, it still would not work until uh, you do the nobody thing, uh, challenge, you know, change owner nobody to for these files. And for me, it was probably the reason because I'm using root. Uh, if you're not going through as root, you probably would not see it. But if you do see that it's not coming up, uh, you can run this change owner to nobody for these two files that are under the, this directory. So once you do that, uh, they're gonna look like this, nobody for these two files. And these are, you know, uh, pipe files. FIFO files, so they're not ordinary files. So you have to use this command, command make FIFO run under the run directory. And once you're done, you can run XBGP. And the way you're gonna run XBGP is like this. Where is my... So here's my XBGP. So in the XBGP directory, I've got a couple of scripts, but this is the config INI file that you're gonna use. Very simple peering with uh, my neighbor, my router address. You put a router ID for your controller, your local address, your local AS and the peer AS. Now let me kill this guy and show you how I started. PSQ dash nine exa. Let me show you that it's running in the background. Uh, there it is, exa BGP, it's running. Okay. So PSQ dash nine exa BGP. 
that speaker, I think. Skill. All right, let's start it again. The way you start it is you type XBGP with the config file. And then you, to stay on the, on the prompt, to get the prompt out, you just use the 8% sign so it runs in the background now. There you go. And once you do that, you should not see any red uh, text or anything. Everything looks good and you're in business. Now, let's withdraw the route here. It's running 4222. Oh, it lost the neighbor, so it's lost. See, when, when the BGP controller got killed, it, it basically withdraw the route automatically. So let's introduce it. X, uh, BGP CLI neighbor. 45002 announce keep uh, keep an eye on this announce 40 announce route 4222 slash 24 next hop and you can write a script for that which I've done 24 let's go to 24 this time it was 24 let's go to 23 And if everything looks good, you're back in business. See that? So that's a, if, you know, if you, if you can um, get this thing to work, it's something that's going to be a, an advanced part of writing. You can also set communities, by the way. Um, you can set communities to be sent out to IP BGP. And if you look at the uh, prefix that's coming in, show IP. BGP IPv4 unicast 40. It's got no communities. Let's set the community to this guy. Community, let's call it 2555. There you go. You can even set community. That's pretty powerful, right? Um, so you're controlling BGP routing through a controller without touching the router. That's pretty awesome. I hope this helps.